Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Today's Bible study is going to be on Genesis 1, possibly Genesis 2, and we're going to take a look. Some people say or are of the opinion that Genesis 1 records two different creations. And we'll take a look and see what you think. Genesis arguably is one of the most important books in the Bible, other than the Gospels, of course. But I tell you what, Genesis is the foundation of the entire Bible. If you don't have a sound foundation on a house, well, your house, when there's a wind, can come crumbling down. Let's take a look. I guess for an opening verse, let's do Matthew chapter 7. Words of Christ, most important. Verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. You know what? Maybe we need to find out what the will of the Father in heaven is. I mean, you know, right here tells us pretty important, right? Verse 22, many, many will say to me in that day, what day? Day of the Lord. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Oh yeah, look at TBN. They prophesied in the name of, you know, they prophesied in his name. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thus saith the Lord, uh, you know, have we not prophesied thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I, Jesus, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And what is iniquity? Gross sin. So there's going to be people running around that prophesied in his name, cast out devils, did works in Christ's name. And he's going to say, I never knew you, depart from me. That's some scary words, boy, I'll tell you what. Verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them... I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew. Sounds like a hurricane, or a tornado, or, well, hurricane. And the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. You know, people, what is that rock that they built the house on? Well, let's have the Bible interpret the Bible. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. You better build your house upon the rock, which is Christ. And Genesis is the foundation of all your doctrine. 
You know, I mean, if you don't have a good understanding of Genesis, um, that's why people get carried away with every wind of doctrine. I mean, it's, you know, it's important. All right, so let's read Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, you see, there was a beginning. Not for, maybe not for God. I don't believe God has a beginning, but the creation had a beginning time in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters the spirit of god now, in let's take a look at something. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 4, some people, well, there's a verse, chapter 4, in verse 23, and it says, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light and what they'll do is they'll tell you that this has reference back to Genesis 1 where we read you know in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters now do these correspond to each other let's take a look you know what let's read Jeremiah 4, the entire chapter, and see, does this tie in with uh, Genesis 1? All right, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 1. If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. Now, how can you return unless you'd been and then left? You know, you if, let's say you went to, uh, oh, I don't know, New York City. You can't return to New York City unless you'd already been there once. Well, these people had been with the Lord, and then they left. So he says, If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations, and what's an abomination? That's a really disgusting sin that God really, really, really hates. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. In other words, God won't kick you out. Verse 2, And thou shalt swear, the Lord liveth in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness, and the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. See, we're supposed to glory in the Lord, not in our flesh. Verse 3. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among thorns. Now, in other words, uh, find a good place to sow your, your seed, and don't sow your seed among thorns. But, you know, it's not talking about farming. It's, you know, it's a spiritual application. Verse 4. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart. Yeah, they, you know, there's a group of people that uh, put so much emphasis on foreskins of the flesh. And, um, but that's not what the Lord wanted. He wanted us to circumcise ourselves of the heart in the spirit. Ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like a fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Oh yeah, I just did an entire series on fire, right? Verse 5, 
Declare ye in Judah, and publish in Jerusalem, and say, Blow ye the trumpet in the land. You know, there was a, a festival in the Bible called the Feast of Trumpets. And um, Christ is going to return at the seventh trump at the end of the tribulation period, the great tribulation, the last trump, the seventh one. There's seven of them. Now, I'm not saying that this ties in with that, but I mean, uh, Jericho had some very high walls, and they told everybody, march around it. Uh, I think it was seven times, and uh, I don't remember if it was seven or eight times, but they blew the trumpet, and the walls fell down flat. So, you know, God does use uh, trumpets to herald important events. Blow ye the trumpet in the land, cry, gather together and say, assemble yourselves and let us go into the defensive city. Set up the standard toward Zion, retire, stay not, for I will bring evil from the north and a great destruction. The lion is come up from his thicket. Isn't Christ likened unto a lion of the tribe of Judah? Oh yeah. The lion has come up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He has gone forth from his place to make the land, to make thy land desolate, and thy cities shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. Sounds like the Lord's angry, doesn't it? For this gird you with sackcloth, lament and howl. Now sackcloth was a time of repentance and mourning for sin. You know, America should be in sackcloth and ashes for sodomite marriage and abortion and all the other murders and all the other wickedness. And if you find somebody that doesn't pe preach repentance, they are repentance for evil and sin. If they don't preach for repentance, you find anybody that doesn't pre preach repentance, they're a false preacher. They are deceivers or they are deceived. One or the other. All throughout the Bible, it teaches repentance. John the Baptist, the, Jesus said he was the greatest prophet of those born of women, taught repentance for this gird you with sackcloth lament and howl for the fierce anger of the Lord is not turned back from us and it shall come to pass at that day saith the Lord that the heart of the king shall perish and the heart of the princes and the priests shall be astonished and the prophets shall wonder then said I Ah, Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people, and Jerusalem, saying, Ye shall have peace, whereas the sword reacheth unto the soul. Yep, God deceived those people. He said, he, he made them think they're going to have peace when they were getting ready to have war and destruction. All right, so, verse 11. At that time shall it be said to this people and to Jerusalem, A dry wind of the high places in the wilderness toward the daughter of my people, not to fan nor to cleanse. Even a full wind from those places shall come unto me. Now also will I give sentence against them. Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariots shall be as a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. You know, it says that Christ is going to be coming in the clouds. Oh yeah, I did an entire playlist on that. Verse 14. O Jerusalem, 
Wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? What is vain? It means worthless. Verse 15. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? For a voice declareth from Dan, and publisheth affliction from Mount Ephraim. Make ye mention to the nations, behold, publish against Jerusalem, that watchers come from a far country, and give out their voices against the cities of Judah. As keepers of a field, are they against her round about, because she hath been rebellious against me, saith the Lord. Now I believe that this is referring to the, this is past, what we've been reading. To Jeremiah it was future, but to us in this time period, this is past. This is referring to the Babylonian captivity. Okay. Uh, let's see. Verse 17. As keepers of a field are they against her round about because she hath left, because she hath been rebellious against me, saith the Lord. Thy way and thy doings have procured, procured these things unto me. This is thy wickedness, because it is bitter, because it reacheth unto thine heart. My bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace, because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Destruction upon destruction is cried. For the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? Now a standard was a symbol that an army carried into battle. For example, perhaps you've seen westerns where um, troops carried their unit flag and the United flag of the United States, well, that was their standard. You know, uh, let's say you had three different um, cavalry troops. They all would have different flags, so you would know who was what and where. That's what a standard was. How long shall I see the standard and hear the voice of the trumpet? For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil. Ooh. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. All right, here we go. Verse 23 that people try to tie into Genesis 1. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, they had no light. Okay. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. For thus hath the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. All right, so is there a time when the heavens will not have a light? Personally, I think this is future. I think this is referring to the end times. Let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at Isaiah 13 and verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof 
out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Ah, so there's going to be a time of darkness. Verse 11, I will punish and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Interesting. In Matthew 24, verse 29, Jesus said, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All right, let's reference um, Jeremiah 4, verse 24. We just took a look at verse 23. Now look, 24, it says, I beheld the heavens, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. All right, let's take a look at Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth, sixth seal, and lo, there was an great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. So here it is, we talk about the sun becoming black, and there's a great earthquake. Oh, let's see. How about we'll take a look at Revelation chapter 16. All right, uh, verse Revelation 16, 16. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. Boy, that's some kind of a earthquake, huh? And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. All right, so let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23. I beheld the earth earth and lo it was without form and void and the heavens and they had no light now if this is tied in with genesis 1 none of this has been even created yet so how can you know i just don't see a creation before the creation i just don't see it i personally i think this is future i beheld the earth and lo it was without without form and void and the heavens, they had no light. Oh, let's take a look at something else. All right, so why did the earth become uh, void? Second Peter 3.10 But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Yeah, that would create, have the earth, um, you know, be without form and void, right? If it burned, uh, if it passed away, right? In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And then um, let's continue reading. Verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, well, you know, if the earth is dissolved, it'll be without form and void, won't it? 
seeing that Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Let's go back to uh, Jeremiah 4, verse 23. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was out without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. Well, yeah, the mountains would uh, tremble if there was a great earthquake, right? And all the cities fall. Verse 25, I beheld, lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. Well, guess what? If we're caught up into the clouds to be with the Lord, and the earth is burned up, well, that would fulfill this prophecy. I beheld, lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down, Remember that earthquake. We're broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. For thus hath the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. For this shall the earth mourn and the heavens above be black, because I have spoken it, I have purposed it, and will not repent. Neither will I turn back from it. Oh yeah, when the Lord says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. The whole city shall flee for the noise of the horsemen and bowmen. They shall go into thickets and climb up upon the rocks. Every city shall be forsaken and not a man dwell therein. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou closest, clotheth, closest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting. In vain shalt thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life. All right, verse 31. For I have heard a voice as of a woman in travail, and the anguish as of her that bringeth forth her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion, that bewaileth herself, that spreadeth her hands, saying... Woe is me now, for my soul is wearied because of murderers. All right, so Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Why? Because he hadn't created it yet. And darkness now, it's, it's quite possible that the Lord had the matter, the matter, you know, elements, but he hadn't formed them yet. And maybe that's why it, it's makes, it has that kind of in a past tense. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, right? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Now what is darkness? Darkness is merely the absence of light. What is cold? Cold is merely the absence of warmth. And what is evil? the absence of God, I guess. Verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, I don't think that was past. All right, I think I'm going to make this the end of uh, part one. I'm going to start making these a little shorter, I think, so... All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. 
Amen.